We refer to the unit circle a lot in trigonometry because it quickly identifies the values of sine and cosine for many of the common angles that we use, such as pi over 6 radians, pi over 4 radians, and pi over 3 radians. Notice that this unit circle also has the angles written in degrees, such as 30 degrees, 45 degrees, and 60 degrees, and so on. The unit circle is made up of 2 pi radians and, and more. You could just keep going around and around. But we'll just talk about one revolution is 2 pi radians. So halfway around is just pi radians, which is equivalent to 180 degrees. We use the unit circle because all of the hypotenuses of the triangles that are produced are 1. So the radius of this unit circle is one unit. It's always one. So if we have the sine function, sine of, a, of an angle equals the opposite side divided by the hypotenuse. The hypotenuse is always one, but the opposite is going to be a leg of some triangle. So if I were to bring a leg down from this 30, 60, 90 triangle, or this angle of pi over 6 radians, I would see the opposite, let's write this down, sine of pi over 6 radians equals the opposite, that's what I drew in green here, as the y coordinate the one half. So that's why we have all these coordinates written down here and some people just like to memorize all of the coordinates and that works okay. So the, the sine of pi over 6 is one half, that's the opposite, over the hypotenuse of 1. The hypotenuse is always 1 on this unit circle. So sine of pi over 6 just equals one half. And then commonly what people say is then the cosine, cosine of the angle equals the x value, if we write this as x and y. So that is the cosine of x equals the adjacent, the x value of this triangle, and that's the square root of 3 over 2. over 1, again over that hypotenuse of 1. So we'll just leave it as square root of 3 over 2. So a lot of times you see that. Sine equals the y value, cosine equals the x value, all the way around this circle. And that's, that's why people say it like that and why it's written like that in textbooks. Now, as far as memorizing these values, well, there's a couple of ways you could think about it. Uh, certainly, you could just memorize this as the denominator of all of these coordinates is 2. It's always a fraction, the denominator is always 2. And then right here you can go down 1, 2, 3, and then back up 1, 2, 3 on the right hand side. I'll show that real quick. You've got the 1 and the 2 and the 3, and then back up 1, 2, 3, and then square root of everything in the numerator, and the square root of 1 is just 1. And so that is a nice way to memorize it. There's nothing wrong with that. And then over on the in quadrant 2 here, you'd have to do the same thing. And remember that the left-hand side is negative. And um, in quadrant 3, both coordinates are negative. It's a little bit different. You're going 3, 2, 1 on the, right, the left-hand side. And then, and then 3, 2, 1 back up. But there's a way, that's, that's okay. That's, that's a way to memorize it. There's nothing wrong with that. Uh, I like to also think about these special triangles. We have a 30, 60, 90 triangle, and you can always build these, that is build the unit circle with a little knowledge about the special triangles as well. So if you have this short leg as being one, a unit of 1, then the hypotenuse of a 30, 60, 90 triangle will be twice, twice of whatever that short leg is, and the long leg will be square root of 3 times whatever that short leg is. Now we're making this 
a unit circle, so I'm going to divide everything by 2. And there we have, there we have our values. You see 1 half as the y value and square root of 3 over 2 as the x value. So you've just built that, um, those coordinates there. You could take this 30, 60, 90 triangle and you could turn it on its side for, for this spot right here. I'll just draw that real quickly. This is also a 30, 60, 90 triangle right there. So you've got the short leg, um, the long leg, and, and the hypotenuse. Hypotenuse is always 1. The long leg now is the y-coordinate. That's the square root of 3 over 2. The short leg is the x-coordinate, the 1 half. The 45-90 degree triangle is the pi over 4 radians. So if we have a unit of 1 on each of the legs, then by Pythagorean theorem, or maybe you have this memorized, that the diagonal or the hypotenuse is the square root of 2. Some people memorize it as the diagonal of a, uh, of a square. Either way, that's, that's fine. Whatever you, helps you to memorize it. Uh, again, we need to make this hypotenuse a unit to make it the unit circle, so I'm going to divide by the square root of 2, and I'm going to divide each of these. I've got to divide everything by the square root of 2. So we're just changing the dimensions of the, of the uh, triangle, but all proportionately. And so our unit then, our hypotenuse is 1 because that's what we need. And 1 over the square root of 2 is the same as saying the square root of 2 over 2. That's by rationalizing the denominator. And that's what we see here with the x and y coordinates for the pi over 4 radians angle square root of 2 over 2. And again, you've got an x-coordinate and a y-coordinate square root of 2 over 2. Now, as far as applying uh, this 45-45-90 triangle, it works over on the 3 pi over 4, the 5 pi over 4, the 7 pi over 4. It's oftentimes easiest to remember those. What trips us up as students of trigonometry is the pi over 6 and the pi over 3. Pi over 6 is the 30 degree angle or the smaller angle and pi over 3 is the larger angle or the 60 degree angle. Um, and then think about this. This 5 pi over 6. 5 pi over 6 is 1 sixth of a pi short of a full pi. And that, that's not a joke like, uh, you know, two jokers short of a deck of cards. But this is, this is one-sixth of a pi short of, of a full pi. So this angle that's in red is pi over 6. So again, we've got the 30, 60, 90 triangle. And I know I'm taking liberties with going back and forth between the 30, 60, 90 triangle. Uh, most people do remember it in the 30, 60, 90 triangle, but... Absolutely, the, the more you use the radians, you'll get used to saying pi over 6 and, and pi over 3 and things like that. So this is the, the 30, 60, 90 triangle, what I have in green over there. And you've got those same dimensions. Short leg, or the y uh, component, y coordinate, is 1 half. The long leg, the x coordinate, is the square root of 3 over 2. And then, of course, we do know that it's negative. The x coordinate in this quadrant 2 is always negative, right? Negative, positive. And in the third quadrant, you have coordinates that are negative, negative. And in the fourth quadrant, you have coordinates that are positive, negative. So that's just some basics, just from graphing a coordinate plane. Um, we, th we think about that, because you think about this unit circle being on the coordinate plane. That's a lot to digest for now, um, but Try that in terms of being able to build the unit circle because sometimes people kind of uh, freak out if they can't memorize it. And, and I'm the same way. I don't like to memorize too much. I like to be able to build it so that I, I, I know that I always have it and I'm not afraid that I'm memorizing it the wrong way or something.
All right, that's a little bit about the unit circle.